Welcome back to a brand new Clash of Clans video, guys. My name is Chief Pat, and today we're going to be hopping into a brand new mailbag with plenty of your guys' questions that you've been sending on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever, and uh, let's go ahead and hop into them. Again, if you guys haven't asked me a question before, just hit me up in the comment section below or in the social media that I have in the description below as well. And uh, let's go ahead and start with question number one, which is from the Green Sears War Clan. So they asked, why does Supercell Games ignore war-oriented players? Hashtag ask Pat. So if you guys haven't been in touch with the community, if you haven't seen what people have been saying over the last couple of months, over a year, it's obvious that the war side of the community feels very left out over the last couple of updates. We've had Town Hall 11, we've had trophy pushing changes, we've had changes to the Clash economy, Town Hall sniping, all of that stuff, and not very many ma major changes to Clan Wars. Of course, if you look back at the actual update patch notes, many of the updates, especially inside of 2015, had very small Clan War improvements, but overall they really haven't received what they've wanted, which is arranged war matchups, cleaning up the war scene uh, from some of the stuff that plagues it right now, or any sort of innovation whatsoever. So I really feel like this next update is going to be something for the war people, or at least it has to be, because if you guys remember that interview I did with Jonas back when uh, the, I guess, Town Hall 11 update came out during the sneak peeks, he said that they were focusing on a lot of war-related stuff going into 2016, and that was really their main focus after this Town Hall 11 update. Obviously, the Town Hall 11 update did not go as planned, and they had to release that update follow-up in January, uh, or I guess early February, or no, yeah, January to fix it up and make sure everything worked out better again. But I'm guessing with this next update coming out, hopefully they have something for the war community uh, or else things might look a little bit bleak. People have been asking for it for a while. They released Town Hall 11. They finally fixed that stuff up. So I'd hope that this next update would have something related to Clan Wars. They did say, again, that it is their priority in 2016 um, to spice up Clan Wars, get some of the features that people wanted, at least do something related to Clan Wars so people don't feel so left out, like Green Seer's War Clan ass. So we'll see what happens. I think this next update is sort of crucial, and uh, there's going to be even more revolts inside of the war community if they don't do anything uh, about what's going on inside of there. So next question from Plague on Twitter, he asks, with the success and popularity that Clash Royale has been getting, do you think the full release will ruin Clash of Clans? Good question. And this is pretty funny. I mean, if you guys think about it, Clash of Clans has been out for over three years, about three and a half years, and no app has really rivaled Clash of Clans. Of course, you have Game of War, but... Game of War really is just full of a bunch of whales. There's not too many casual players, I would guess. It feels like Clash has really just dominated the App Store forever. It's always been number one or number two uh, engrossing forever. It's always had a ton of downloads. It's always been super popular. But then along comes Clash Royale. And if you guys check the numbers for Clash Royale inside of those beta countries, it is insane. Last time I checked, it was the number three grossing app in Canada. Uh, and uh, all the other countries, it's in the top 10. It's performing extremely well. And I would not be surprised at all if the top three grossing in the App Store look like Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, and Game of War. So I don't think it's going to ruin Clash of Clans. I do think, however, that it probably puts pressure on the Clash game team to innovate Clash and to bring something new to the game since Clan Wars was two years ago since it came out. Um, and seeing your next door neighbor, literally the game team that sits 30 feet away from you with this brand new game that's super killing it on every single app store and doing really well and getting all this great press. So I don't think it's going to ruin Clash of Clans. I think Clash of Clans has their fate in their own hands, where their game goes, whether they re release new stuff inside of the game, whether they fix some of the stuff that have been plaguing people for a while. I feel like Clash of Clans um, won't be ruined by Clash Royale, but it definitely puts a little bit of pressure on them. I feel like uh, just having that game team across from you with this brand new game that's performing really well, they don't have any of those age-old complaints, you know, because Clash Royale is brand new. Uh, it's just like when you get in a relationship and you have that honeymoon phase where everything's good with you and your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever, but then after a couple of months, some of the nasty things start popping up, like... Uh, stuff inside of Clan Wars like modding and not having arranged war matchups and some of those other things. So I feel like Clash Royale is in that honeymoon period right now. And uh, we'll see what happens with both games going into the future. But I don't think that the release of Clash Royale will ruin Clash of Clans by any means. So Max asked on Twitter, how would you feel for the Queen ability being a dark spell? 
I think it's a neat idea. I think what Max would mean that the troops inside of it wouldn't get a attack bonus like the queen does currently when she goes invisible. I feel like the dark spell would just make your troops invisible for a couple of seconds. I feel like this would actually be really cool and it would be pretty unique to see how you could drop this dark spell and get some of your, uh, get some of the defensive buildings to change aggro. Let's say an inferno tower locks onto your king and you drop this new dark spell on top of your king. So he turns invisible for maybe like, you could literally make this spell last one one second or half of a second but in that blink of a second the inferno tower will stop attacking the king and maybe move to something like a barbarian an archer um skeletons or something like that and overall that would save your barbarian king so i think this is a cool idea it might be a little bit tricky to balance because it could be super powerful like i just said if you could save your barbarian king with a single spell spot that's pretty ridiculous um but i think that would be a neat ability maybe they can make it a really small radius and last again for only half a second to a second to really just work for resetting aggro of defenses but overall a cool idea and if you guys would like to see it let me know what you think with a comment in the comment section below so final question is from Logan on YouTube. He asks, do you think they should reset the resources on the single player map every Clash of Clans season, which is 30 days? That's actually a pretty neat idea. I really like that. I don't think they need to reset maybe all of the single player maps, like levels one to 40 because they don't have too many resources. I guess they could if they wanted to, but if they could reset levels 41 to 50, that would definitely be neat and give people an opportunity to go back to those maps. But honestly, I feel like it's just a band-aid solution for the problem of single player maps as a whole, that they haven't updated them in forever. They don't have even expos inside of the single player maps. They created the single player maps before Town Hall 9 even came out. So I feel like it would be a neat feature but it would be cooler if every single season, let's say, they um, they made new maps, they had seasonal maps, they had different maps, stuff like that. I feel like they'd have to add some more maps in before they did that single player reset, or else it would be pretty much just free resources for everyone Town Hall 8 and above uh, without even having to try on, some, on pretty much all of those levels. So I feel like priorities should be to make new maps and then maybe work in some sort of seasonal map changes with some sort of reset of resources, like Logan said inside of the question. And overall, that would be something pretty cool for the single player map uh, feature. So yeah, that is going to wrap it up for the questions today, guys. Make sure you drop your questions in the comment section below. Again, you can hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, Snapchat, WhatsApp. I don't know. I'm just naming everything I can. Hit me up. All the info is in the description below. And uh, yeah, until the next video, I will see you guys later. Peace out.